And now we get to the citation indexes. Uh, we have Web of Science, we have St Scopus, we have JSTOR, we have Google Scholar. We're not going to spend a ton of time on them. So why do we search multiple databases? Reduce bias, get a more sensitive search. And here's another mapping of the databases that we have. There's lots more to read about. So like yesterday's, um, we have a number of other source, source, uh, sources. And now let's review the structured search and the setup process. So we foreshadowed the structured search by showing you the three chunk structure. Now let's do the setup and the process. Ha, ah, there's a setup. Remember the organizers from yesterday? Remember our Pico, Eclipse, Spider, and all this? Um, those are great for uh, narrowing down your research question and really getting into your protocol. Now for today, we want a very simple search organizer. And this search term organizer uh, just focuses on concepts that you were able to highlight with your Pico or with your other organizer. So let's do an example, a CVT. This is a, this is a very intuitive example. It's a bit less difficult to work with than the um, craniofacial injury one we had yesterday. So does CBT as compared to other therapies improve depressive symptoms in adolescents and young adults with drug addiction sufficiently to enable the return to full-time studies or, of work after six to 12 months of treatment? Wow. So that looks like a systematic review kind of question, or in fact, it's even a little bit tighter than that. Um, so it's a very, very specific a question to which we want a policy or an action type answer. And we break it down, this is a PICO. So we break it down into PICO into population, adolescence with drug addiction, intervention, effectiveness of a cognitive behavioral therapy in alleviating depressive symptoms. For our comparison, we have other therapies and specifically psychoanalysis. Our outcome is improvement of depressive symptoms sufficient to allow normal activities like school work. And we also have the, the time that we're investigating, six to 12 months of treatment. Okay, do we need all of this? Ha ha, let's see. Let's see how these PICO concepts that we had isolated from our very detailed question uh, slosh into or port into these very simple columns, uh, each of which is dedicated to one concept. So we have CBT. Do we have a synonym? Yes, cognitive behavioral therapy. And of course, once we start working with a thesaurus, we will have multiple, multiple synonyms uh, from the thesaurus that we can add to our table. You see there's an empty space there underneath cognitive behavioral therapy because it'll get filled with thesaurus terms. Now we've got depression. Excellent. So depression, well, not so excellent, but depression has a synonym and a wider synonym of depressive symptom, right? Then we've got adolescents and young adults. Well, that's a big one. So we've got teens, tweens, youth, we can have a variety of other filters that could be added there. Drug addiction. Ooh, okay, so specific drugs. So fentanyl could be one, but there could be others. It could be opioids in general, for example. And then resumption of normal activity is the more general way of um, saying uh, what we have there in number five. So remember uh, what our Prisma full search strategy example calls us to do. We want to chunk our concepts, and then we want to have a final search that creates the concept overlap. I've shown you this once already. Why? Because this is the most important takeaway from today's session. In addition to working with the Zorai, in addition to working with the Prisma search extension, which is a must, we need to structure our searches like this using our subject-specific database. So the structured search process searches one term or concept at a time, maps each of these to the subject headings in a subject-specific database, if we're using those and we should be. It forces us to get full results for each concept and connect all the subject heading terms with an or um, to the keywords or nor normal text words that we would use. And once we've explored every single concept on our list, we combine the search results with an and to get the overlap. And again, I'm showing this to you again like this, because this is how searches for knowledge synthesis have to be structured. And when you're doing a search review, so when you're doing the press, press is the peer review for your search strategy. If your searches are structured this way, you're basically three quarters of the way to getting through your press because that's what the reviewers who are other librarians who do knowledge synthesis are looking for, okay? 
So let's do a couple of search examples. First, I'll show you a couple of canned ones, and then we're going to go and look at real ones because we've got about 10 minutes to look at a couple of examples and a couple of real ones. Maybe. So uh, first of all, let's take a look, a quick look at Medline Ovid. Not all of you will be doing that. I realize that ProQuest might be more friendly, but uh, let's just take a look at how this goes. And then we'll have a, I think we have a PubMed example, which is fantastic, and a ProQuest example. We'll go through them quickly. So if we use our, a simple concept-based table, so column per concept, uh, we're going to pick on psychotherapy versus CBT first, right? So we're going to look at the therapies. So our cognitive behavioral therapy is a subject headings in Medline. Now, remember about exploding. We have to take a look at what else is in that taxonomy to see if it's actually related or not. So the other possibilities there are acceptance and commitment therapy and mindfulness. We are not that keen with mindfulness. It's diff sufficiently different that our question isn't really uh, looking at that. So we don't explode cognitive behavioral therapy. We just keep it as it is. And we search for it. So we add it to our search and take a look at it. Syntax is really important. You will see that forward slash shows us that this is a subject heading. When we connect the or there, we connect it to cbt.mp. So this, uh, the, the .mp means that Medline is going to be searching in places such as title, abstract, so it's a specific set of significant, significant places, significant um, parts of the record where a Medline is going to be looking at, uh, for, um, for that concept. Okay, so we're going to, this is our first search and it covers cognitive behavioral therapy. It doesn't show all the concepts, uh, all the synonyms. It's a fairly crude search. Our next concept is depression, right? So we're going to be looking for depression and this is the crudest, fastest way. We're just looking for the keyword and for the thesaurus term. So we have a question in the chat. When you explode CBT, has uh, more than 25,000 terms and mindfulness has 3,400 approximately. Since it's a taxonomy, it does not mean that the 3,000 plus is not included within the results. The question is excellent because it goes to the core of what exploding means. Let's, let me actually back up the slide. If you don't explode, you only get the 25, 2,500, 600, 633 results without the 3412. No, it actually should not be included, right? So these are numbers that are written for each of these without exploding. So mindfulness, the, the number within mindfulness, it should be 3412, right? Now, when you explode, the numbers should be added up, right? Does that make sense? So when you explode, when you include the sub, um, let's say the subheadings or the daughter, daughter nodes, the numbers should add up. But if you don't include them, if you don't explode, the numbers on each line represent only what's under each heading. Okay, perfect. But do verify that always. This has been my understanding always. But because the numbers are there, you can check um, whether the numbers add up. So if you run this search, you can check whether the numbers add up. So let's just back us up to depression. And again, as I said, we could spend the whole afternoon on this. And we're going to quickly run out of time for examples. So depression, again, I'm showing a very crude search, just the thesaurus term and the basic keyword. We should be looking for more, typically. Now, I really go to town on adolescent because when you go through the possible terms, you see that adolescent and young adult, it just shows you where Medline is looking for those terms, right? Because .mps are both keywords, right? So we have adolescent forward slash, that's a thesaurus term, not exploded, or young adult, thesaurus term, not exploded. Exploded would have a, a forward slash exp after it, right? So it's just the term itself. And then we search for the keywords. Now look at what happens on line six, okay? This whole thing is about line six. Line six, which is at the bottom of this purple rectangle, shows three or four or five. Okay, so that means that that large number on, on the number six line shows that we have connected all the synonyms for young adult or adolescent together. And number six shows we're working with all of these terms connected, right? So this is our expanded set of results for that term. So, so far we have cognitive behavioral therapy, 
both thesaurus and keyword, depression, thesaurus and keyword. We have adolescent, young adult, both as thesaurus and keyword. And now we're going to move to addiction, right? No, this is another great question. Is the syntax for searches the same with for each database? No, unfortunately, syntax varies somewhat. What I'm getting at here is that you have to carefully look at the syntax. The thing that stays the same are Boolean operators. So OR and AND are always the same. The .mp or .ti for, for only look in title and so forth, or .access look at abstract, actually AB is abstract, access is, is, a, is a more narrow form. These are specific to the Ovid platform, okay? And more specifically, Medline within Ovid. .mp is an extension that's not explained in, let me show you something. It's not explained in the Medline document, but what it actually means is that Medline is looking for uh, that keyword. So it's an indication that you're looking for text word. Another one is uh, .tx or, or .tw that it's looking for that particular word, that term, in a number of preset places. Now, I'll show you something else that's really important. Let me show you, and that might be the last thing we can see because unfortunately searching takes a long time. It's really essential to understand that while you have to learn a lot of these, there are search documents. You see this advanced searching document from Medline? It explains first of all, how to use the extensions and then how to use the operators, right? So the question about what does that particular extension .mp mean? That's the one uh, I called it the, the most valuable players or the multiple places. Uh, that's the one that doesn't have code in the Medline list here, but I'm in the Medline list and it shows you that all the other extensions like the .ti or the .abstract show that what you're searching in is a specific field. So MP is multiple places, multiple fields, right? That's what it stands for. And it summarizes which fields it's looking for in the square bracket. So I was just showing you the, the help documents to show you that all of the syntax is listed on that help page, but .mp syntax is actually explained in the square brackets, right? So .mp means uh, Medline is looking in title, in abstract, in original title, name, and so forth. Uh, you see the other list is very detailed, but .mp has its own list. Okay, excellent. Uh, syntax is tough, and we could spend hours looking at syntax, but we've got about one more minute. So let me show you what happens when we combine all of these, okay? So the key part here is line number six, where we combine the three different terms for adolescent, okay? Yes, um, so uh, we have a question, does MP narrow the search? Yes, it does, but there are other ways of narrowing the search more. So if we were to write dot TI, it would narrow the search tremendously because it would only look for young adult term in titles of articles. And we wouldn't have this big square bracket showing us which fields are included because then .ti would be only the title. So we have the square bracket here because the MP equals shows us all the multiple fields, multiple parameters that are included in this particular MP. But we can also change that. That's something we can edit. So if we wrote .ti or .ab, it would limit the search even further just to one particular part in every record but we're searching through several parts of records, which are all important to the meeting. So title, abstract, um, variations on title, subject headings, and so forth, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Now, I know that a lot of you will have to go, but what I'll do is just finish this example and share these materials with you so that you see more examples of structured searches I don't really explain the syntax very much, but the things with the syntax, as I showed you uh, with, uh, with the help file, that's available through every database. And you can either contact me or another librarian to help you with that. The thing that very rarely gets through uh, to anybody who wants yesterday's uh, presentation slides who didn't get them, absolutely, please email me. So I'm just going to uh, put my email in again into the chat. So we've covered CBT, depression, adolescence, 
Now let's move on to our uh, disorders, right? So drug addiction. So we have this chunk. And again, we combine alcohol-related disorders from the thesaurus. So the forward slash shows us it's an unexploded thesaurus term. And we combine that with this multiple parameter uh, text word or keyword search, right? Seven or eight. And now look at what happens. We combine everything for our final search result. And this is pretty well the format in which uh, knowledge synthesis searches are expected to be. So this concludes what we wanted to get out of today. I have tons more examples in this PowerPoint. This is a monstrous PowerPoint. I have to admit there are 110 slides, which is probably really awful. But theory or the background as to why you need to be doing these is rarely taught because it's rarely connected to the Prisma um, search extension, which just got published. And all of that was just part of the lore of, of librarianship. So I just, I want you to um, bear with me, tell me how to make it better. And um, uh, please don't forget to join Jessica tomorrow, uh, where she's going to show you what you would do with results of your searches, right? So how you would use Covidence with results of your searches.